Hey everybody, I've seen a lot of tutorials on YouTube showing ways in which ComfyUI can create purely generative material or replacing something entirely in a shot, which is cool, but my curiosity lies in ways in which ComfyUI can be used for visual effects artists. So this tutorial is just going to show how ComfyUI can help us in paint. So if I play this shot, we have two boats in it, and we're going to paint those out. I'm gonna use Comfy UI for the boat on the top right, and then I'm gonna show you a way in which we can use stabilized paint to paint out the boat on the bottom left. So we first wanna pick a frame in which both boats are closest to frame without going out. So we have the most resolution we can work with. I'm gonna say it's frame 68, and then we're gonna go over to Comfy UI. So this is called reference paint. And the top image, we're going to actually paint in the area that we want painted out. And then the bottom area down here, we're going to paint areas that we want to fill it in with. So I'll show you what we mean. Right click up here and then go down to open mask editor. And really quickly just mask the boat that we want removed. For the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to paint out the one down here too, but we're going to do that by hand in nuke. Save. And then down here, same deal, open a mask editor. And then we wanna select areas that we wanna fill it in with. So Comfy UI is gonna take these areas and generate the in paint with it. I'm gonna take the area around the boat here, maybe some algae. Cool, save. Alrighty, everything's already plugged in. So the first part I said is gonna in-paint it. The second part is gonna upscale it. Let's go ahead and run it. And I honestly think that your clip positive and negative prompts could probably be empty for this. Okay, and it's done. Let's look at the compare node down here. And we see that it did a good job at painting it out. One thing I've noticed though with the in-paint is that things could be a little bit blurry. I found in the case sampler that the steps steps of 20 and a CFG of five tends to yield pretty good results. But if anybody knows ways in which we can actually get this to be even sharper, please let me know. I think that'd be a huge help for us. And then the second part of the workflow is the upscale. And I provided a link to the tutorial and a link to the 4X Ultra Sharp. And we'll see how that looks. So it gave us a little bit extra there, which is actually gonna be a big help for us. And I'll show you what I mean. So take this image and import it back into Nuke. So the image is now 7680 by 4320. And we wanna bring that back down to the format of our node. And then what we wanna do is actually just mask that area that that boat was in. And yeah, we got to change the color space here. So bring that to linear. And I do notice maybe a slight gamma shift here when it comes to exporting stuff from Comfy UI. If anybody knows how to prevent that, please let me know. Okay, let's mask this out here. And since our project file is in a different resolution, in your Roto node, go to clip two, no clip. And let's soften this mask a little bit. Remember to stay at frame 68. Let's see how this looks. We got to change this node to auto alpha. That should get rid of it. Yeah. Okay, so we have our comfy paint on top of our boat there. So Comfy UI has helped us remove this boat right here, but we still have to track in that patch and we still have to paint out the boat on the bottom left. And to do that, I'm gonna use stabilized paint, which I'll show you right now. So first we have to track in our camera, bring in your camera tracker node, double click it, go to your settings and we wanna up these and at the same time decrease our tracking settings. Set our reference frame to frame 68 because that is the frame of our paint. 
go back here and then hit track. And let it run. This will take a couple minutes. Cool, and it's done. Let's look at our track here. Oh, excuse me, we have to go to solve real quick. So this will actually give us data on how good our solve is. It's a pretty simple shot. I don't think it's gonna be too difficult. So we have a solve error here of 1.04. For a shot that's 1920-1080, a solve, solve error of less than one is ideal. So let's actually decrease our track errors. And then what we wanna do is delete the rejected and then delete the unsolved. So now our solve error is down to 0.64. That's pretty good. Let's get our scene here, create. Let's turn off our tracking cloud. And what we, what we wanna do is select areas that are on the same plane as the boat. So I'm gonna take a few points here and a few points there. Right click, create card. Plug that into our scene, and then plug that into our paint. Whoops. So right now it looks a little wonky. We need a project 3D node. And then we need a hold frame here that needs to be plugged into our camera. So the Project 3D node is really great. What it does is that it enables us to place the paint down without being distorted by the card, and it'll hold the frame that it's at. So now if I play this through, it should look like our paint is now integrated into the shot. We have a matte line there, which means we have to increase the size of our card Now, since it is an aerial shot, the tonal shifts in the color are going to be constant throughout. And I'm going to show you a way in which we can actually change that to match the plate. But it looks like it's tracking in pretty well. And then I told you that we were going to track out, we we're going to paint out the boat on the left using stabilized paint. And here's how we would do that. So you need another scan line render here. We're gonna double click it and actually set it to projection mode UV. Plug that into our camera up here. Plug our card in, and then we need another project 3D node. And then we want to plug this back into our plate up here. Let's play this through. So this is a stabilized view of our boats. If you look in here, you can see the camera is moving around it, but since we're at UV mode, we get a stabilized view of our card. And you can see that the boat actually goes out of frame here at the bottom. So let's go to a frame where it's more visible, put a roto paint down, roto paint node down, and then we're going to use constant strokes. I call it constant because I'm used to come from After Effects, but you just want to go here and select it to all and then start painting. And you want to paint downward because otherwise the paint is going to come in contact with the edge of our mat where the shot literally ends. Okay. Cool. That's gone now. And if I play it, you'll actually see what I mean. The paint is actually going to go over where the shot ends. And then I'll hit the edge of it right there. If you did it the other way, then the edge of the shot would come into frame here. Put down a mask node, and we just want to mask this area only. That's the only the area that we want to incorporate back into the frame here. So we have to 
add the track back in. So you need another scan line render. This one not set to UV, but set to render camera. Take your camera node, excuse me, uh, take the camera pipe, connect it into our camera. Take your object scene, connect it back into the card from up above, copy and paste it down, click that in. And now it is tracking back into the shot, which is super helpful. Okay. Let's see how this looks now. So the stabilized pane is going to take into account the areas of the frame around it that change color so we can fill that in. So that's why this area looks more natural. Right now, this looks very dark. It doesn't look like it's integrated into the shot yet. So what we want to do is use something called a curve tool. Plug that in to our stabilized paint. And then we're going to take the bounding box here and actually plug it into the part of the ocean that's above it here. I'm not going to mess with these settings. I'm just going to leave it at average intensities and then hit go. So this will keyframe all the ways in which the color is changing in the RGB values. And I'm going to plug that into a grade node. So I'll show you what I mean. It's done here. If you go to intensity data, you can see that we have keyframes. I'm going to grab a grade node. I'm going to select our property bins to two. So now what we can do is take this intensity data, plug it into our multiply node, excuse me, our multiply function here, and then alter that via the gain in the white point. So what I mean is control shift, click, drag this down into the multiply. So it carries all the keyframes over. I'm going to take that grade node and I'm now going to plug it into our comfy white paint. Let's see how this looks. So it looks really dark right now. Let's select this back to one. Like I said, change the white point so that the tone is about the same. And then there's a little color picker tool here that gives us color values down here in the bottom right of our window. So if I hold control shift and drag, I get a box that'll give me a general idea of what the RGB values are. And I'm gonna take these values and match it into here. So right here, it's 09, 15, 18. I'm gonna bring the bounding box over. 09. 15, 18, and then I'm just going to match it a little bit more by eye. Cool. Actually, I'm going to make the mass smaller here. Okay, let's see how this looks. I think we can soften this a little bit more. Go back into our stabilized paint. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of the darker area here so that's just a little bit more flush. Cool. Let's play it through. So we can see it's affecting it a little bit too much here. It's a little bit too bright and then a little bit too dark here at the end. I'm actually just going to put another grade node right here. I'm going to keyframe the gain. Just going to bring that down like that. Now we're in the area of the extra 10%, which kind of take the longest, I think. I'm gonna blur this just a little bit more in the mask.
going to isolate this mass just a little bit more. See how this looks. So this is just one way in which we can use ComfyUI to help us in a VFX workflow. This inpaint method is very simple, but I'm seeing a lot more intricate ways in which ComfyUI can be integrated. And I think it definitely has its place in a VFX pipeline. So please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Let me know if you have any issues following this workflow. I'll provide it down in the link below, in addition to links where you guys can get the checkpoints. And I'll see you in the next one.